Welcome to Understanding the Implementation of the African Continental Free Trade Area webinar, courtesy of the Kenya Association of Manufacturers. Welcome to Understanding the Implementation of the African Continental Free Trade Area webinar, courtesy of the Kenya Association of Manufacturers. Welcome to Understanding the Implementation of the African Continental Free Trade Area webinar, courtesy of the Kenya Association of Manufacturers. Welcome to Understanding the Implementation of the African Continental Free Trade Area webinar, courtesy of the Kenya Association of Manufacturers. Welcome to Understanding the Implementation of the African Continental Free Trade Area webinar, courtesy of the Kenya Association of Manufacturers. Welcome to Understanding the Implementation of the African Continental Free Trade Area webinar, courtesy of the Kenya Association of Manufacturers. Well, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, we are ready to start. So let us settle in so that we can kick off this webinar. Kenya, oh
Well, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this webinar on understanding the implementation of the African Continental Free Trade Area, AFCFTA, courtesy of the Kenya Association of Manufacturers. My name is Johnson Mwakazi, and I'm greatly honored to moderate this defining session for our continent. This is a high level discussion among AFCFTA Secretariat, the East African Community Secretariat, State Department for Trade and relevant Kenyan government agencies. This webinar is being recorded, so I kindly request you to mute your microphone unless it is your turn to speak. I will have the honor of inviting each speaker to speak when it is their turn to do so. In the meantime, you can post your questions and comments on the chat box. Now, Ladies and gentlemen, the African continental free trade area stands out as a key flagship project of the African Union's Agenda 2063. It is a blueprint for attaining inclusive and sustainable development across the continent over the next 50 years. And just to appreciate the journey that we have taken so far, let us please listen in. This decade, is the decade of African independence. Forward then to independence, to independence now. Tomorrow, the United States of Africa. We are calling on everybody to think Africa, act Africa, and prosper Africa. It comes down to the change of mindset. I think this is an opportunity which Africa should not miss. We are implementing the Africa we want. A lot of the countries understand that this is good for them, that it is a game changer. This is an historic moment for our continent. So this is entirely African driven. These African countries are making a treaty among themselves. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen as we appreciate the journey that has been taken. We also want to appreciate that for decades, there has been a critical need to boost intra-African trade. And in this new era, the African continental free trade area is now providing a comprehensive and mutually beneficial trade agreement among the member states, covering trade in goods and services, investment, intellectual property rights, and competition policy. At the forefront, of course, is the AFCFTA secretariat charged with various responsibilities related to the implementation of the AFCFTA hosted by Ghana. And just before we now kick in, kick off with our discussion, it would also be important just to note what was said by Ghanaian president earlier this year, starting first of Part January. Part of the growth and prosperity that we seek in Africa will come from us trading more among ourselves. The trading on the African Continental Free Trade Area, AFCFTA, it provides us with the vehicle for us to trade among ourselves in a more modern and sophisticated manner. It will offer a huge opportunity to exploit the abundant wealth and resources of our great continent for the benefit of all our people. And it will give us protection in how to deal with other trading blocks. With a collective desire for shared prosperity, we are confident that the AFCFTA will succeed and provide a new impetus and dynamism for the rapid growth of Africa's economies and deepen the process of integration in Africa. We owe it to generations and more to ensure that the biggest trading bloc on the globe will be rewarding to all in Africa and in Kenya, the Kenya Association of Manufacturers 
is at the forefront, standing out as a dynamic, vibrant, credible, and respected business association that unites industrialists and offers a common voice for businesses. Now, to tell us more on the new AFCFTA market opportunities and manufacturers' expectations, please welcome the Kenya Association of Manufacturers Chief Executive Officer, Ms. Phyllis Wakiaga. Karibu sana. Um, thank you. Thank you very much, Mwakazi, um, for uh, the warm welcome and for moderating this session. Uh, good morning, everyone. Compliments of the new year. I hope that all of us are safe and keeping healthy in this new year. I want to take this opportunity, and it's really my pleasure and privilege, to invite you all for the KAM AFCTA series. Uh, this is going to be a series of discussions on the Africa continental free trade area starting today. Um, so this will not be the end of this discussion because we see the opportunity that exists in the African market. Allow me to recognize some of the key guests that have joined us today. Uh, we have the representative of uh, the Kenya Bureau of Standards Managing Director joining us today. We also have the State Department of Trade uh, representatives uh, joining us today, Kentrade, uh, Kenya Revenue Authority, the Kenya Association of Manufacturers Chairman, Mr. Mushai Kuniha, the Trade and Tax Committee Chair, Mr. Barat Shah, the rest of the Kenya Association of Manufacturers Board Members, uh, sector leaders, chapter leaders, and members of the association, the fourth estate, Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I think looking at the videos that we, Makazi shared at the beginning, uh, it's really just a strong call to the Pan-Africanism that we saw in the 60s that led to independence and a lot of the development then. And we had the Ghana president, Kwame Nkrumah, and the father of Pan-Africanism say that Africa is one continent, one people, one nation. And nothing demonstrates that more than the AFCTA and that is why we are here today. In terms of the benefits of the AFCTA, as a continent, it gives us endless opportunities uh, because it has tangible benefits uh, for all of us to reap from trading under preferential terms uh, within the African continent. It also creates a borderless market for the 1.2 billion people devoid of trade barriers and restrictive tariffs. At least that's the ambition. The AFCTA also provides an opportunity for the enhancement of regional value chains for manufacturers, since the rules of origin will encourage sourcing of raw materials from the African continent. Manufacturers will also have an opportunity to trade with countries with whom we don't necessarily enjoy bilateral trade agreements. They'll also be able to enjoy the economies of scale that come from having a larger market and also have access to cheaper raw materials. It will also help us diversify and get into markets like West Africa and North Africa and boost international trade, create more jobs, enhance skills transfer, and also liberalize the movement of suppliers and, and supplies of goods and services. So in terms of the GDP, the FCT has the potential to improve the GDP of Africa as a continent, considering that we have the largest aggregate demand as a continent. Despite the fact that we struggle with purchasing power, we do have a huge population to benefit from these services. So ladies and gentlemen, to hear, today we are here to unpack uh, the opportunities within the AFCTA and see how we can practically realize them as uh, African manufacturers, industrialists, and uh, even our SMEs, how we can access this market. We have a mixed up serious practitioners, uh, people who have been in the forefront of negotiating this agreement in their specific areas. And uh, we'll be getting from them a lot of information that we can utilize as we plan this year to take advantage of this agreement. At times it's difficult to, to, to really uh, embrace the promise of a new and uh, different way of doing things. But AFCTA is giving us the opportunity to realize that uh, regionally and ensure that we grow our businesses. So I welcome you to this first series. Please give us feedback on other areas that you'd like us to cover in future AFCTA series. And thank you for all of you who have joined. And we look forward to listening to all the speakers. Asante San.
Thank you so much. Madam Wakiaga, thank you so much indeed. Indeed, we're here to un unpack the opportunities in this really defining opportunity for Africa. And so that uh, for those who will be alive come 2063, according to the agenda 2063, we can tell a different story of Africa. An Africa that stood out, made a decision to go into the new frontiers to make a change and transformation for ages to come. Now, ladies and gentlemen, come provides an essential link for cooperation, dialogue, and understanding with the government by representing the views and concerns of its members to the relevant authorities to help us understand what the AFCFTA Secretariat and African Union should address to make the AFCFTA a game changer for manufacturing sector in Africa. Please welcome the CAM Board Chair, Mushai Kuniha Karibu Sana. Thank you very much, Johnson Mwakazi. I thought you were blessing me with being alive. Uh, to be alive by 2063, I hope that comes true. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, Happy New Year to everyone. Uh, good to see you again for what I think is our first big event for the year. We've had a couple, but uh, uh, our first big event this year. So like you had, uh, uh, I'll start by welcoming everyone and Phyllis named all the people we've got on, on board. So I'll say all, all protocols observed. And thank you also members for being engaged today in this um, conversation. Now, the, the, this is an area where we, we work on in CAM is to keep our members informed and to have a future-looking um, future perspective. It's not just only looking backwards and trying to deal with problems that, that come up, but also st starting to look ahead. And I think for anybody doing strategy or thinking of manufacturing in Africa, the next three to five years, I think the Africa CFTA is going to be very critical. It's going to be something that is coming up. And as we'll be talking, you'll see that it's not here yet fully, but it is here. It is agreed. It is going to start happening. So we need to be um, prepared about, um, for it and um, do the things that we need to do. Look at the challenges and also the opportunities that it brings. Now, obviously, the, the thing about the any free trade agreement is about trade liberalization. Whether it's with the EU, um, with the US, or within the EAC, we have the EAC, we have COMESA, and it's allowing people to exchange goods with each other and uh, in that way to compete. In some instances, I think, and what uh, economic history now has shown us is that well-structured open borders help all countries. Not only the recipient companies who import goods, but also it helps the people in the country, their businesses to be more competitive and to be able to export because it opens markets uh, for them. So in a free trade area, there'll be no uh, tariffs. There should be no uh, barriers. In fact, they are both uh, tariff barriers and non-tariff barriers are being opened up. And what we want to do in Africa is do that because literally in Africa today, there is very little trade that occurs between us. And I think the point to note is that it is not that there is no trade in Africa. It's just that we are not trading with each other. So people are buying uh, materials, but they'll buy from uh, China, they'll buy from Europe, they'll buy from the US and possibly they would have bought from each other. So it's about the substitution of the trade. Uh, instead of going, um, say, international or go to other markets, what can we do for each other? What can we supply to each other and grow in that uh, space? I think um, the studies I've seen by the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa, they predict that we can increase our trade in Africa by 15 uh, from 15% currently, about $15 billion, to $70 billion by 2040. And 2040 is not very far. We used to think 2020 was far, 2030 was far. It's not far. So that, that would be a huge jump and would help us um, greatly. As manufacturers, that is just opportunity because that trade would mean it is us buying in, whether we are buying in raw materials or taking finished goods, 
or even pushing raw materials the other way, but that trade would help us um, grow in a certain, in, in a big way. Because sometimes we are always looking for markets and one of the key things that CAM has been doing for members or we in our advocacy is looking for markets, new markets uh, for our goods. And this is these are some which are nearby, they are close and we do have opportunity. I think the thing for us is to find those opportunities and be sure that we are, we are competitive in those opportunities and do what is necessary to get there. But it's fair to say also that uh, our free trade area is going to bring us challenges as well, because we are now going to get a bit more competition from other countries, uh, neighboring countries as well, who may have uh, investment. Everybody is going to be growing their investment, growing their manufacturing, and those goods would, would be coming in. So all businesses need to look at that and say, where do I have a key competitive advantage? And if already there is somebody in another African country who seems more competitive than me in manufacturing, what can I do? What are the things that I need to change? Do I need to upgrade? Do I need to um, um, upskill? Do I need to focus on particular areas so that I'm competitive uh, in this market? Do I need new investment? So these are the kind of things we must start thinking about if we are going to continue uh, surviving through this period. But the opportunity is big. And I think that's the main thing we need to look at. We, we can look at the small bits uh, of the challenges that is going to give each one of us. But what we need to look at is what is the opportunity? And like we heard from uh, Kwame Nkrumah and those who are 60 years ago, people are already dreaming about how we would have one Africa. And that story is repeated and over and over again. It is not like we don't need to grow our African continent. It's not like we, we are already wealthy and doing well. We have a huge task ahead of us to grow our economy. So we must take all opportunities, um, try out all ideas and see what we can um, achieve. So on 1st January, 2021, the Africa CFTA was launched and it has in that sense started on the road, but we know that there's still a lot to be done and there are a lot of challenges to make it a reality in many ways. I think we know the obvious ones is like logistics. We, you know, getting goods even across East and Central Africa would be difficult, let alone West Africa and North Africa. And that's um, going to be continuing work for the coming years. I think we already have trading blocks and we are there. We are going to need to sort out how those work, whether it's ESC, Comesa, SADAC, um, ECOWAS, all these are going to need to be sorted out and the tariff barriers across this. There's a lot of technical work that needs to be done to make it happen. And this again is an opportunity for us to be forward looking because we can actually input in that technical work in the structure of what is going to be coming out in the future as, um, as the actual free trade area. So we need to participate to be aware. Um, and like Philly said, this is just the first of many seminars. It's gonna be a long, uh, it's gonna be a journey, but if we participate, we can actually help craft what comes out of this, um, this whole process. We have some countries who haven't joined and we are hoping we can get more of them to join. And that's um, happening also at the AU level and with, with other current uh, countries. I think um, there, there'll be a lot of, like I said, technical things on customs procedures, um, rules of origins, uh, the tariff negotiations, and it's important that we participate in them at CAM. We are starting uh, to do an analysis of them with the different sectors and we hope the sectors will, will cooperate and uh, contribute so that we can have a good position for our country in terms of what we are, we are going to be growing. So I think I see a huge opportunity for us with the African continental free trade area. Um, we cannot really grow our manufacturing base if we want to become a, a manufacturing base without exports. Um, exports are going to be, if we're gonna really turn that key to 15%, uh, 20%, 30%, it is about exports. So with our neighboring countries who are nearby, we need to look at what are the opportunities there? What can we export in those markets? Now that the doors are being opened, let's be ready so that when the door is open, we can go out there, uh, benefit our own businesses and benefit Africa. 
So thank you very much and looking forward to hear the rest of the contributors from the members. Thank you. Over to you, Johnson. Thanks, many thanks, Bona Chair. Appreciate your contribution there. And uh, just to pick a couple of things that you mentioned, come is there to make sure that members are informed and of course helping them to look forward to understand what is needed in this new era. And there is something, of course, you mentioned. Yes, and the big question, 1st of January, 1st of January 2021, the much touted date for the commencement of trading has passed. Is it all systems go? And as you put it, Bonachia, there are many challenges, but of course, the opportunity is big. The opportunity is big. And before we now listen to some of the key players who definitely, as far as Kenya is concerned, will make it happen for us. Just a concern, a couple of concerns that we have so far that will really all really bring all of us to the table so that we can all work together. Number one concern, AFCFTA customs manual for use by business community, which AFCFTA secretariat need to publish and interpret in the official languages in the 54 countries is yet to be published and circulated. That's a challenge. Challenge number two, agreed and validated tariff offers aligned to the agreed rules of origin will need to be published and products aligned to the agreed rules gazetted for purpose of trading. So far, validated tariff liberal liberalization offers aligned to the agreed rules of origin by the African Union are not yet available or accessible. That's another gap there. And maybe let me stop with the third one because we have several as well. The third one, the third concern is agreed rules of origin need also to be gazetted as the remaining rules are also gazetted. There is, a, of course, a window provided to finalize this by June 21. But just to echo the words of uh, Bona Chair there, the opportunity is big. We cannot be a manufacturing base without exports. We must be ready. And there is one particular party, a key player in our country that is consistently at the forefront, making sure that we are always ready and to really talk to us about how KEBS will implement the product standards under the AFCFTA trade regime. Please welcome Madame Estengari, Director, Standards Development and Trade. Karibu sana. Good morning. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much, uh, Johnson. And uh, with all protocols observed, good morning, everyone. I'm here to represent the Managing Director, Kenya Bureau of Standards, um, on uh, how Kenya Bureau of Standards will implement, um, will assist in the implementation of the AFCFTA. And um, Uh, as I talk about this, I would want to start by introducing uh, what Kenya Bureau of Standards is and uh, what our law and mandate is in Kenya. Kenya Bureau of Standards uh, is a national standards body which was established through the Standards Act, CAP 296 of the Laws of Kenya. It started its operations in July 27, 1974. And our operations are guided by strategic plan 2017-2022 and the annual performance contracting by the government of Kenya. Our vision is to be a global leader in the standards-based solutions that deliver quality and confidence. And we have a mission to provide standards-based solutions that promote innovation, trade and quality life. And we have a motto for standard, standards for quality life. We have four core values that guide our operations, and those are integrity, 
uh, we maintain very high level of independence that assures confidence. So all the operations that we do, uh, you can be sure that we are accountable, honest, trustworthy, and respectful, and we carry them uh, under ethical uh, in our, all our actions. We also have a, a customer focus. So we will listen to you, our external customers, to deliver an ever-increasing value. We also observe excellence. We literally pursue success and continuously look for new ways to improve our services and processes. The final one is sustainability and that our activities promote economic and social development while ensuring protection of the environment. Our mandate uh, is as per the Standards Act, Cap, 290, Cap 496 and the Rio notices, which provide the standardization and conformity assessment services. This is through promotion of standardization in commerce and industry. We provide testing and calibration services. We, we also do product and system certification. We undertake educational work in standardization and practical application of standards and then maintenance and dissemination of IS uh, units of measurement. We have several services uh, which include development of standards, that is company standards, national standards, regional and international standards, which will go a long way in the implementation of the AFCFTA. We also do maintenance of measurement standards that is under meteorology, we offer technical support for multilateral and bilateral trade agreements. Under conformity assessment services, we do inspection, uh, that is import and export. We also do quality assurance, uh, which we do product certification for all the products that are offered for, for, for market in Kenya. Then we do market surveillance. We also do product and system certification and testing services. We also have training and education, and we have information services, uh, that is the library and inquiry points, which include the WTO inquiry point. So um, as far as AFCFT is concerned, we, we look at uh, what a standard is, and it's a document that is established through consensus and published by a recognized body. In this case, it is Kenya Bureau of Standards. It is an agreed way of doing something which could be making a product, managing a process, or delivering a service, or supplying materials. Standards are the distilled wisdom of people with expertise in their subject matter and who know the needs of the organizations they represent. These are the manufacturers, sellers, buyers, customers, trade associations, and users or regulators. All these people are involved in the development of the standard. Standards offer passport for trade. So standards do far more than just help you to comply with the relevant rules and regulations. Uh, they facilitate trade, international trade, and support businesses into export markets. By reducing technical barriers to trade, they reduce production costs, and they offer opportunities for economies of scale. Companies are able to access a wider number of customers globally, um, we have harmonization of standards. This is uh, where standards uh, across countries act as a major catalyst for trade, allowing companies to sell their products and services without the need for adaptations across multiple markets, facilitating access to markets and global supply chains. The harmonization of standards, um, we with, harmon with harmonized African standards, full implementation of AFCFTA will be achieved. However, Kenya Bureau of Standards is committed to harmonization process of standards in Africa. We also talk about the non-tariff barriers uh, in the AFCFTA, and non-tariff barriers are some of the most prolific barriers to intra-African trade. Mm -hmm. The barriers plaguing inter-African trade are mostly of a regulatory nature and include customs operations, border documentation requirements, the rules of origin documentation, reshipment inspections, 
and sanitary and phytosanitary measures and TBT measures. As a national standards body, Kenya Bureau of Standards, we are committed to addressing all NTBs related to standards and technical barriers to trade. This is in line with the WTO TBT agreement and the AFCFTA annex on TBT. This will ensure non-discriminatory measures and unnecessary obstacles to trade and protection of human health and safety or protection of the environment. And these TBT provisions strongly encourages members to base their measures on international standards as means to facilitate trade. So Kenya Bureau of Standards and uh, the WTO TBT, what is our role? Uh, we are the secretariat to the TBT National Consultative Committee and we host the TBT National Inquiry Point with the main role of reviewing developments in technical regulations, standards, and conformity assessment procedures that are barriers to trade nationally and, and with the trading partners. Our role of the TBT National Inquiry Point is to inform WTO Secretariat of any impending implementation of new or revised standards, technical regulations, and conformity assessment procedures and respond to inquiries on technical regulations, standards, and conformity as assessment procedures. Therefore, our role as Kenya Bureau of Standards is cut out in the AFCFTA along the lines of uh, the, uh, along these lines. Our role in the also, uh, the changing global trade flows have enhanced role of standards in sustainable development by encouraging integration of national economies and trading systems into fairer global trade regime. And unlike in the developed countries where standardization is industry driven, um, which is bottom up affair, standardization processes in Africa are government led with top down approach. Therefore, the private sector has to play a rightful role in this arena in terms of developing and implementing the standards. This is the support for standards development. Under the African Organization for Standardization, Kenya Bureau of Standards is leading in harmonization of regional standards as African standards, initiating and coordinating the development of African standards with references to products which are, peculiar, which are of peculiar interest to Africa through the technical committees. Adoption of the regional and international standards to facilitate trade and promoting the and facilitating exchange of experts, information and cooperation in training of personnel in standardization activities. We call upon the private sector to partner with us as we drive this agenda to ensure that Kenyan products and services find their space in the AF, AFCFTA we have what it takes in terms of standardization to claim our position in Africa and beyond. Thank you very much. Well, thank you so much, Madam Esther. We appreciate your contribution to this discussion, but of course, we also appreciate the work you're doing to establish global standards so that when we stand out as Kenya, they can say, we can buy from Kenya, we can do business with Kenya. Now, very quickly, just to alert, alert all our participants, please, please note, you have an opportunity to actually post your comments or even questions via the chat box. Please utilize it. And uh, very quickly, just to pick up a, a, a comment here from uh, uh, George Achola. George Achola says, as we push the agendas of the AFCFTA in Kenya and East Africa, we need a communication medium that CAM can use to communicate effectively to the industrial, uh, industrialists. We have the industrialists uh, who are ready to engage, uh, who could not be here today, but they need this information. So this is actually a question uh, that I hope towards the end CAM will engage. But will we'll, we'll, we'll respond to, but just to let you know, this is the first of many sessions we will have. We've just started the journey. So thank you for your questions. Thank you for your comments. Keep them coming. Use 
the chat box so that we can engage deeply in this very defining issue. Now, as we move forward, we were expecting the secretariat, the AFCFTA secretariat to be here, but there is something that also the board chair, Kuniha, you mentioned, that also the secretary general really spoke about, and really the need for us to be at the forefront in supporting this initiative and not just look at the challenges. Let's listen to what he had to say. The World Bank observed that if Africa implements this agreement properly, by the year 2035, we will be able to lift out of extreme poverty 28 million Africans. If we implement this agreement properly, by the year 2035, we will be able to lift 68 million Africans out of moderate poverty. Ladies and gentlemen, it's absolutely clear. It's written on the wall. The opportunities are there and it is big to really talk to us about how we can engage further, be at the forefront. Please, let's welcome one of George Dinder, State Department of Trade, Principal Trade Development Officer, to share more. Karibu sana. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Johnson Makazi. Uh, good morning, uh, the panelists and all participants. My name is George Dinda, as has been mentioned, um, representing the State Department for Trade. I would also appreciate uh, if um, uh, the admin could uh, make my colleagues. I've seen uh, Gladys uh, is on call. I've seen also Josiah Rotita on call. If they could be made to be panelists so that in case there are many other questions, they could also help to respond. Um, uh, moving up to my presentation, basically I want to look at uh, the background, which um, I, I saw what Yaga had mentioned, even the chairperson had mentioned, we look at the objectives of the CFTA, what are the outstanding work, and then most importantly, we will look at um, uh, the state of play of Kenya's readiness to trade under the CFTA, and then what we perceive to be our way forward. Um, the next slide basically gives us a background, and uh, the, the, the CFTA was launched uh, way back in 2015, uh, when the, the, the assembly, 25th Ordinary Assembly of the AU that was held in uh, Johannesburg. Then in 2018, the agreement was signed by 44 countries. Remember that during that, uh, in, that was in Kigali. Uh, also, the, the protocol on the movement of persons, uh, rights of establishment, also was signed together with the protocol on uh, trade in goods, trade in services, rules and procedures of dispute settlement. And of course, the CFTA is a flagship uh, program of Agenda 2063 on boosting intra-Africa trade. Currently, uh, it's a big market, a population of about 1.2 billion people and an estimated um, uh, GDP of, of over 3.4 trillion US dollars. Um, the CFTA currently uh, recognizes uh, eight regional economic communities. Some people maybe ask, will, will, will it erode uh, for us who are in ESC? Will it erode the ESC or Commerce? No, the CFTA will use uh, the regional economic communities as building blocks. And so uh, the RECs will continue to trade as they are trading currently. The article provides the preservation of the aki. And so uh, we will still continue um, our trade under EEC as we are, if, even though the CFT has come into place. So the, the CFT will not get rid, it will not erode the benefits or the levels of integration that we already um, have in, 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 in the regional existing regional blocks. Um, basically, the scope, um, the CFT is divided into three phases, phase one, phase two, and phase three. And the phase one basically deals with trading goods, trading services, and then abation rules and procedures of dispute settlement. Phase two uh, basically will cover a protocol on intellectual property rights, will cover a protocol on investments and competition policy. Then the assembly in 
that met in February last year uh, agreed to have a protocol on e-commerce. And obviously we've seen the role of e-commerce during this COVID uh, period. But then again, there are discussions to have phase three negotiations being done uh, concurrently with phase two negotiations. The deadline for this has been said to be uh, December, 2021. The next slide um, uh, basically looks at the level of ambition. And um, um, on, this, this is on trade in goods. And uh, we have three categories. We have goods that have been categorized as uh, uh, category A, that is 90%. And then we have sensitive and exclusion. And sensitive and exclusion basically takes care of uh, the sensitive areas or a, or a country's sensitive areas, the areas that they want to, to protect. But it doesn't mean that you cannot trade in them, okay? Uh, like for the example, the exclusion list as a, as a clause for review after every five years. And uh, well, the, the, the belief is that, I mean, you, you, what, what the areas that you're protecting, you will have built capacity in them over five years. And so they can be included, they can be gradually included for trading. Uh, and so we have uh, for countries that are, and, uh, are less developed, uh, we'll, we'll uh, face down their tariffs on the 90% for a period of 10 years. And for us as Kenya, who we are under ESC, we've taken the non-LDC period, and so we'll be bringing down, facing down our tariffs for the next 10 years. And then um, for the sensitive, which is 7%, will take uh, 13 years, and then ex exclusion will not, will not be traded on. Although if you trade on them, you'll have to pay 100% duties. And this is the level of ambition. The next slide uh, uh, basically um, uh, talks about the objectives of the, of the CFTA. And as, as we've heard from the previous speakers, uh, the CFTA uh, aims to create a single market for goods and services with free, free movement of uh, business persons and investments. And again, uh, it, 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 you know, it, it aims at expanding intra-Africa trade. And you know, the levels of intra-Africa trade are very low. Uh, they are below 15%. And so we see the safety as, 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 an, as an avenue through which we can, can increase trade. And then most importantly, again, the changes of multipoker and many African countries don't just belong to one uh, uh, rec. For example, Kenya, we are in ESC, uh, we are in Comesa. You know, Tanzania is in EAC and he's in SADAC. And so this multiple membership in RECs, you know, the CFTA uh, by harmonizing the rules, you know, will, will uh, in a way try to resolve this challenge. Again, uh, the CFTA aims at uh, uh, enhancing competitiveness uh, at the industry and enterprise level. The next slide. Um, the next slide uh, basically gives us a snapshot of what the current status is. As, as it is now, we have 54 member states that have signed the agreement. Realize that when it was launched in Kigali in 2018, 44 member states are the ones that signed, but gradually they have bought into the vision of the Agenda 2063, they have bought into the vision of the CFTA, and now we have 54 member states. It's only Eritrea that has not yet signed up, but there are indications that they will, they will move them on board. Um, so far, we have adopted protocols on trading goods, trading services, rules and procedures on the settlement of disputes. As it is now, we have 34 state parties. Now, state parties are member states that have signed, ratified, and deposited the instruments of ratification. So when we say a member state that are, has ratified, ratification means you, you've gone through your national processes. If you need a cab cabinet approval, uh, and, you, and then after cabinet approval, maybe it has to go to the parliament and then has been approved by the parliament, then it is deposited with the bureau of the chairperson of the AUC. Um, then you become a state party. So as it is now, we have 34 state parties that they have ratified. And these are the ones that uh, when they trade, they will have preferential uh, uh, treatment. Uh, of course, there are indications from other countries, have, like I've, I've indicated here, Somalia, we have Algeria, we have Zambia also that have indicated uh, quite advanced stages of uh, ratification of the agreement. Uh, we have 41 submissions on tariff offers. Uh, 
Um, and by this is this is by December. We had 16 on uh, specific commitments on trade or trade in services. But of these 41, there are only 33 state parties. So that means uh, uh, the only 33 state parties that have submitted are the ones that will be able to trade preferentially under the CFTA. Of course, realizing that we need to have a commercially uh, meaningful trade, uh, the, the Council of Ministers, and of course this was adopted by the assembly, extended the date of submission of tariff offers to June, 2021. So that means that um, we'll be expecting more more offers to come. We've been given opportunity to uh, deal with, with the other outstanding issues that are there so that uh, we can have commercially meaningful uh, trade within the CFTA. Phase two negotiations on investment and IPR have commenced um, and we've had capacity building activities and uh, on, on investment from throughout last year. We had our first meeting on IPR uh, also in, in last year. Phase three negotiations, like I mentioned earlier, uh, will be Will be merged with. They will be they will be negotiated concurrently with uh, phase two. Under the deadline, have been fixed for for uh, December 2021. We hope we will have completed all this. In terms of the trading documents, uh, uh, and this touching on the rules of origin. I mean, uh, the rules, the certificates of uh, origin. We have concluded uh, the security features, and uh, these documents now. Uh, uh, to be circulated to state parties so that they can be published and also put online. Um, and then uh, we have an operational portal uh, for reporting, monitoring, and elimination of on NTBs, which I've given you the website there. We have also an online, uh, just if you, could, uh, if you could go back, yes, you also have an online uh, portal on Trade Observatory. And the Trade Observatory is a dashboard that consolidates all continental trade data and statistics. So for example, if you wanted to understand the market requirements in, in Egypt or in Mauritius or in Senegal or Seychelles, you could just go to that dashboard and then you will see, on a click on the button, you get all the information, the prices, the, uh, the SPS conditions, the TBT, all that will be provided on, 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 the, trade, on the trade portal. Um, then again, we also have um, the digital payment system, digital payment and settlement system that um, will provide a platform for, for easy exchange uh, for, for traders. So it will be like a clearing house so, so that traders can, can, can you know, have a reprieve from the Forex exchanges. Um, and then of course, we have an online portal for negotiation. Uh, both for trading goods and trading services, but this is for government to be able to, to trade. Okay, the next slide is on um, uh, the submissions, which I had alluded earlier. And I said that there are 41 submissions, and these cover four customs union. That is the ESC. Um, and under ESC, um, we have two countries that are, that are highlighted in red, that have not, two partner states that have not ratified. Uh, though we have given uh, a common tariff offer, uh, Burundi and uh, uh, United Republic of Tanzania have not yet ratified, um, though we have a common offer as EAC. Then moving to SACU, you have Botswana that has not yet ratified the agreement, but they have given a common offer as SACU. So there you have Lesotho, South Africa, Namibia, and Eswatini. Then coming to SEMAC, Central Africa, you have uh, actually the, the only legally um, legal tariff offer that so far has been given that covers the, 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 the three levels, 97 and three is, this, is the one from CEMAC. And CEMAC has, has all its uh, member, member states of that community, uh, all of them have ratified. They include Cameroon, Central African Republic, Congo Republic, Chad, um, Equatorial Guinea, and Gabon. Then moving to ECOWAS, you have Benin, uh, and Liberia that have not yet ratified, okay? Though they have given a common offer. Then you have other countries that do not belong to any custom union that have also given their offers. And those that have given their offers that have not yet ratified include Malawi, Madagascar, Seychelles, uh, Democratic Republic of Congo, South Sudan, Zambia, and Mauritania. So these are the countries that have been given up to June 2021 to ratify 
the agreement as, as we con conclude the negotiations on tariff offers. Then the next slide, uh, Manasse, uh, basically um, looks at the key outstanding issues. And there, 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 are the, there are three key outstanding issues. One of them is on the rules Bona, of- Bona George, Bona George, allow yes. me to cut you before you focus on the key outstanding issues. Uh, because of time, I'd kindly request that you just uh, break it down within the next maybe one minute, because uh, afterwards we will have a, a panel discussion so you can delve deeper into the, the, the aspects you're uh, focusing on. But in the meantime, please, uh, you, if you may Fantastic. kindly wind up. Go ahead, George. Fantastic. Basically, the, the three key outstanding issues, starting with the rules of origin, both of the general provisions, that is the legal framework, and uh, Appendix Four, which has uh, the specific and uh, I mean the, the specific rules and uh, and uh, it's called hybrid, both spe yeah, specific and general. And then we have the the, the manual. Uh, the agreed rules of origin are ninety one percent. We need to bring them to one hundred percent. We have the submission of tariff offers and submission of specific committee. Then the next slide basically talks about our preparedness, and I think this is important for the private sector to know where we are in terms of um, uh, uh, trading under. Uh, the CFTA, we have a draft implementation strategy that has, has been delayed by COVID-19. We will need to, to, to validation. We have submitted our, our concessions, tariff offers uh, under the, 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 the ESC, both for services and for tariff. We have uh, no, uh, focal points for NTB, uh, for trade facilitation, for, for trade observatory. The SPS, of course, you, you had the cabs talking, there are focal person on, uh, on standards. Then we have a committee on NTB. We have, we have uh, uh, we've been doing sensitization programs. We have signed the protocol on free movement of persons and rights of establishment. So th this is where we are as Kenya and this indicates our readiness. Thank you so much. Uh, um, that, that are the things we can discuss under the panel, panel discussion. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Buana George. I appreciate it. And of course, uh, later on we'll have more detailed discussion based on the comments that are coming in. Please note as a participant, Go to the chat box, post your comment and question. We also have uh, some representatives from uh, the State Department of Trade, and I'd kindly request maybe one minute comment. One minute comment from uh, uh, we have uh, State Department Deputy Director, Multilateral Division, Miss Gladys Kinua. Maybe you can uh, give your comment in about one minute. Uh, th uh, thank you, Wakazi. I don't have much to say because my colleague has covered everything. I just wanted to add something on NTB mechanism. What usually happens in ESC, the business community have a challenge of knowing if we don't resolve the NTB within partnership, what happens next? The one of AFCFTA at least has an added advantage because if the NTB is not resolved within the legs or with the state parties, you can escalate the same with the dispute settlement mechanism. There is a provision that in the dispute settlement, you can have your NTB address there. That's my only addition. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Gladys. We also have uh, Acting Director External Trade, Mr. Oliver. Mr. Oliver? All right. Well, thank you so much. Uh, of course, uh, go, ahead, go ahead. Just, just an addition. Yes, sorry. There are that there are 34 uh, uh, ratifications. I'd indicated 34, now there are 35. Sorry, I, I just forgot to update. Malawi is the latest addition. So we have 34 countries that have ratified. Right. Thank you so much for that clarification and assurance that indeed all the countries are coming forward with their commitment. Now, very quickly, we want to focus on the other side of Kenya, still focusing on trade, and to tell us more about how prepared still we are, I'd kindly request uh, we have one of our panelists who is ready. This is Trade Facilitation Director, Ken Trade, talking about online infrastructural development in Kenya to support AFCFTA. 
Customs Procedures and Market Access Information, Madam Rose Rono. Madam Rose Rono. Thank you, Johnson. Uh, I don't know if uh, I can be able to present from my end. Sure, sure. Okay, then I think you'll need to stop presenting what's on the screen. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, thank you, thank you. Let me know once you have seen uh, my presentation, then I can be able so to- So we proceed. can see it. Okay, thank you uh, very much uh, for this. Um, my name is Rose Rono. I'm a Director of Trade Facilitation at Kenya. And today I'm representing my CEO, Mr. Amos Wangora, who would have wanted to be here, but uh, because of other commitments, uh, he was not uh, able to be here. So um, I'll take you through a presentation on the online infrastructure development uh, that we have put in place as a, as a trade facilitation agency in Kenya uh, to support the uh, Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement. So for those who have not interacted with the uh, Kenya before, we are a state corporation that was established uh, in January 2010, and our principal objective is facilitating international trade, and also we implement uh, and operationalize the single window system. So those who heard about the single window system, uh, I'll also take you through uh, an understanding of what it is during my presentation. Our current ministry is the National Treasury. We work very closely with the Department of Trade uh, uh, since uh, our mandate is in facilitation. So we work very closely with them uh, in several of, of the initiatives that they have there. Um, our vision is uh, making a difference in trade facilitation. And I'll just go ahead to just, uh, uh, you know, uh, taking you through the online, online infrastructure or supporting uh, support uh, that uh, Entrade has for this new agreement that uh, promises to transform the continent. And uh, one of them is a single window system that Kenya implemented uh, in 2013. And uh, we have been using this for some time. I know the Kenya Association of Manufacturers uh, uh, members, a lot of the members have been uh, uh, using the system uh, because it facilitates trade. Uh, and we've been having several engagements uh, from the time we implemented the system and uh, they have been very supportive. Uh, we are very good partners. So for those who are not aware about what the single window system is, it's basically a facility that allows parties uh, involved in trade, transport, logistics, standardized information, documents with a single entry point. And you can, if you can see from that diagram, we have a trader sitting on one side or a clearing agent. We have the single window system, which is the middle. Then we have the other government agencies. As when you're doing an import or an export, you require a permit or a license from a, a government agency. So we facilitate that. Initially, this process was being done manually. You would have to walk to the different government agencies to get your permit. But the single window system has provided for that, for the automation to be able to get uh, uh, these uh, uh, permits online, and also for the government agencies to be able to do their approvals online. It also has a payment, uh, a payment leg whereby you don't have to go and do the physical payments, but you can be able to pay online uh, through the integration that we have had with, the, with KRA through the iTax system. So that is what the single window system is. And uh, some important dates are the project. We started this as, as a project which kicked off in 2012. And uh, 2013, uh, the system went live. And in uh, 2014, it was officially uh, launched by the president. And we, were, uh, we went to full operation in 2015. So there are 12,000, approximately 12,000 registered users in the system and uh, 800,000 transactions uh, per year. Uh, 41 stakeholder uh, organizations, which include 36 government agencies, use this system. And uh, the government issued a directive uh, uh, requiring that all government agencies must use the system. So if you're issuing a permit or license uh, for an international trade action and you're a government agency, you must use uh, the system. So what at the end of it, we have been doing, we have been onboarding several government agencies who have been still been uh, using the manual, uh, the manual way of issuing these uh, permits uh, onto the system. Uh, the, and currently what Kentred is doing is upgrading uh, the system. So this is one of the systems that uh, will enable uh, 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 the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement. And as Kenya, we have gotten onto it very early, uh, as, far, as far back as being operational in 2015. I know a lot of many other uh, continents or countries within the continent uh, do not have this innovation. So we, we know that uh, this is going to assist us, especially when it comes to uh, trading goods. Uh, it makes it uh, much more efficient, whereby you're, you're, you're not uh, uh, you're doing uh, the, the transactions uh, manually. 
Another uh, infrastructural, on the infrastructural uh, initiative that has been put in place by Kenya is the information portrayed uh, in a portal. And it's basically a portal that provides one of uh, accurate information on trade procedures. So if you want to import or export um, a commodity in Kenya, you can go to this portal and it's a requirement of the facilitation agreement that Kenya is a signatory to. And uh, it's a document procedures. There are so many, uh, there are so many uh, uh, commodities we continue to document. As of now, we have documented around one procedure. And in addition to documenting the procedures, we are also simplifying. So we, we find that our, our product has so many procedures when it comes to exporting. For example, coffee. When we were do, doing the documentation of coffee, we found that coffee had around 99 procedures. And we went ahead and uh, simplified it and, uh, this to, uh, to introduce the procedures around the three procedures. And we continue oh, Madam to do that. I, I beg yes. your pardon. Let me let yes. me let me interrupt you a bit. Unfortunately, we can't hear you clearly. And then there is also the option you can actually have it on full presentation so that we can see you see your presentation fully. Are you able to do that? You okay. can just go. Yeah, yes. Yes. Full. Yes. I'll try and speak Excellent. up uh, so that maybe and then louder, you please. Clearly. Louder, please. Unfortunately, okay. you, because of you, time, John. two minutes. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, Go ahead. I'm, I'm just about to finish. So you can be able to log on to this portal and be able to get more information. And it's really good for, for, for uh, if you're new in trade, if you, you want to know how to start, it's, it's, uh, it's really good. And we are going to be working with the State Department of Trade uh, to ensure that the, the portal also has up-to-date information in terms of the, the tariff conditions, in terms of our, our tariff schedule and uh, the market access conditions that we've given, to ensure that you have that uh, information as, as, as a trader. In simplification, I mentioned that. We also have the maritime single window. This is one of the automations that was still very manual. And uh, we, we are about to complete this. Uh, and we are working with the uh, Kenya Maritime Authority, uh, KFIS, KRA, uh, and, uh, Kenya Ports Authority, to ensure that some of these uh, documentations that are required at, at, the, at, the, by, uh, at the port are no longer uh, manual documentation. They are, they are automated. Uh, other initiatives, the marine cargo insurance, we're also working on that um, to ensure that it is, uh, uh, is automated. We have 27 government agents, uh, sorry, 27 insurance companies that are integrated, and we are trying to get more and more on board. The international management system, also uh, we are working uh, with KRA to integrate our system with that, the single window. Uh, and I think uh, there, there is a proposed go live of, of February. And uh, with this go live, we are going to see uh, uh, more automation of um, more automation of uh, of the international trade processes and less power. We've also automated the duty remission uh, um, module. Uh, we've implemented the risk management module, which just assist government agencies not to do full verification of all cargo arriving. They can be able to choose and see which cargo is more, you know, uh, which, which can be do uh, intelligent, you know, uh, uh, risk management in terms of uh, uh, verification of cargo. In terms of the uh, uh, data, we have implemented the, a business intelligence uh, tool in working with Market Africa, and this will be very important uh, with the with the Af African Trade Observatory. We are looking forward to possibly a partnership whereby we can be able to use the business intelligence tool. We we'll producing a report to be of uh, will be of great help to the trading community. We have the trade logistics information platform. Uh, we are doing a, a proof of concept on, on a smart to increase efficiencies uh, at the port. A logistics coordination platform, uh, which uh, I think uh, let me not go in detail on this. We are we are a member of several committees which are all facilitating. For example, the National Implementation Committee of this agreement is a member of it. The Africa Alliance of E-Commerce is a continental. Uh, Association, which uh, are champions for the automation of international uh, trade processes, on bus ports that are regional representation committees. All these committees will be able to assist us to ensure that uh, we are en enabling the CFTA by ensuring that we are reducing the, the non tariff barriers. Because, as you know, with the barriers, are, the tariff barriers are, are reduced, then what will be outstanding is are the entities. And we are going to work through these different, uh, different uh, uh, committees and the initiatives, online initiatives that we have put in place like a single window to ensure that uh, we are ensuring the, the success of the agreement. So I'll just end there uh, with my presentation. I know uh, it has taken time. So if you have a call, uh, question, I can be able to answer later. Thank you. 
Well, thank you so much, Madam Rona, for that presentation, really assuring us on the online infrastructure development in Kenya in readiness to do business within the African continental free trade area. Now, please note, we have one particular final session where we will hear, then we will have an opportunity to respond to some of your questions. The chat box is on. Please keep posting your messages. We'll be glad to share some of them directly and possibly if you have a question directed to a particular panelist so that we are able, so that we're able to respond to your questions succinctly. We have, uh, this is uh, Lamek who says, whereas full harmonization of African standards is key for effective trading under, under the FCFTA, it's important that mutual recognition of certification marks is advocated for. Thank you for that comment. And please make sure that you keep posting. And thank you so much for those who have also uh, identified certain things we need to work on and you're posting Asante Sana for the panelists in case somebody posts a question or a comment that you'd really want to uh, pick it up, please be free to do so after this final um, conversation. But in the meantime, just to appreciate where we are and where we are going. So we ought to be ready, all of us together, to be ready to participate. And we're asking the big question, are we ready? But for us to be ready, we must understand how we can implement the African continental free trade area. Earlier on, I mentioned a couple of issues that we will still have to deal with and that is, of course, in regards to the Secretariat. Uh, for instance, there are software applications which are incorporated in various customs departments for purposes of recognition of products and applicable tariffs from member states which are yet to be installed. All right, we have another one here. Border stations need to be equipped with trade facilitation infrastructure, including access to software, manuals, and tariff schedules for them to practically allow the intra-trade to flow. These are concerns that we have, but we are saying the opportunities are big. And maybe one more concern customs personnel at various border stations including the business community in member states have not yet been fully trained or even sensitized on how they will go about in executing the AFCFTA trade but I am here to say that we want to celebrate the Kenya Revenue Authority that is actually at the forefront in making sure that we are well informed is as even as we prepare to engage with the rest of Africa. And to tell us more about the transactions we can make, please, our first presentation, please welcome Ms. Maureen Wanginda, Assistant Manager at Trade Facilitation Division, Interregional Trade, talking about how Kenyan companies can begin to engage. Karibu sana. Thank you so much, Kenya Association of Manufacturers Management, our day's MC, uh, Johnson Mwakazi. Um, all protocols observed. Good afternoon. My name is Maureen Wanginda from Customs, and uh, I'll be taking you through the role of Customs, uh, uh, Kenya Revenue Authority, Customs and Border Control, um, role in implementation of AFTA. And uh, we have our technical um, rules of origin uh, officer who will be taking us through the um, customs procedures and what is expected and the documentations that we require in the implementation of AFCFTA. So, next. 
So um, the background has been, we've been taken through the background by trade, by our colleagues uh, from trade. And so I'll go straight to the role of customs. So what is our role as customs? One is uh, revenue connection, trade facilitation, border control and security, uh, collection of international trade statistics and uh, negotiations and enforcement of international and regional agreements. And um, at this point, this is where KRA has been at the forefront in supporting negotiations at all levels and um, for, for us to have a smooth implementation. And since we are the people who are the, the, the people manning the uh, entry and exit points, then it has been important for us to go through the whole process of negotiations and um, supporting the negotiating teams. So Kavata will be taking us um, through customs procedures and um, the documentations that are required for implementation of um, ASCFTA. So what, uh, what is the role of KRA and what have we done so far? So, so far we have um, submitted the vocal points. Uh, we also, we've also circulated the signatories. Uh, we've done, we are in the process of printing and publishing the trading documents, that is the rules of origin certificates, the declaration forms. And uh, we've also, we're also doing the adjustments to customs um, procedure management systems. We have a new system, the ICMS, that uh, we are trying to align with um, with our systems, sorry. Um, so we also have an action plan. We've already started the capacity building and training of our staff and uh, the external stakeholders. We already started that um, in collaboration with the uh, trade and uh, that will be a continuous process moving forward. And at this point, I'm going to invite Madam Kavata to take us through customs procedures and what we expect uh, for us to go through the export and import process. Thank you. Thank you so much, Madam Kavata. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kavata, and I work in customs uh, and uh, rules of origin. I'm going to take you through the procedure for exporters and the way we register them before they start uh, using our certificates of origin. Currently, Kenya is implementing five trade regimes. We have the ESC, Comesa, GSP, ABOA, and the Euro One. So the first step, the exporter will apply. We have the applications form in our KRA website for those exporters who intend to export under the preferential trade regimes. And once they do the application, we go do physical verification at their premises within five days of receipt of the application. Once they they qualify, we put them in our database and then they can start purchasing the certificates of origin every time they're exporting their consignments under preferential trade agreements. So what is ongoing? Uh, under the FCFTA, we have 81 agreed rules and as it was agreed by the head of states, we are going to trade with the agreed rules of origin. We also have the submission of tariff offers as uh, it was discussed by the Ministry of Trade with the 41 submissions that we have. From our end, we are, we are doing the procurement process of the certificates of origin, the supplier declaration form, and the origin declaration, which are the trading documents under the AFCTA. We are also aligning our customs management systems to fit in with the CFTA. So what the challenges that we normally have are uh, because the rules of origin are complex, we, we are always training our customs officials to be so familiar with the origin criteria and the way they check the verification process for the goods that are originating in the trade agreements. We also have uh, like continuous training on HS and valuation for the purpose of certification under the preferential treatment in the AFCTA. 
The other challenge that we have is that as a, a body that collects revenue with the free liberalization of the tariff lines, there will be obviously loss of customs revenue. So what is the way forward? From what we've seen in the other uh, trade regimes that we administer, it's important to keep on communicating uh, with the other competent authorities for the purpose of information sharing and risk management. We also are doing training and capacity building for both customs officials and the private sector to ensure uniform application of the rules of origin. So these are our offices in Kenya. We have the headquarters in Nairobi, Samia Park. We also have offices in Mombasa, Nakuru, Eldoret, and Kisumu. This is where we issue the certificates of origin for preferential treatment. That's the end. Thank you so much. Well, thank you so much, Madam Kavata. Madam Maureen, are you done? Or you'd want to add something? Um, oh. I, I want to make a request. Thank you, um, Mwakazi. I want to, to make a request that we add our Chief Manager, International Affairs, Nancy Nyetich, as a panelist for the Q&A session. Seeing a teach, that's all right. Noted as Sante Sana. And, and, and sorry, I forgot. We are here on behalf of our commissioner who is um, engaged in some um, in other activities. So we're here on behalf of our commissioner, Madam Pamela Hago. Sorry, I forgot to mention that at the beginning of the presentation. That's all right. Thank you so much indeed, Madam Maureen Wanginda. We also heard from Madam Kavata Motuku. And now we also have Madam Nancy Nyetich, who will also be part of the panel to respond to some of your questions. We're now ready for your questions. And of course, we'll be looking at some of the comments that you have sent. Please go to the chat box, post your questions so that we will be set to get the valid responses from our dear panelists. But before we start, just appreciating what we are getting into, that is in regards to the African continental free trade area. This is a story all the way from Benin. Please listen carefully because, because it will give us an understanding as to why we must be at the forefront, regardless of the challenges we may have so far. Each year, 150,000 tons of frozen chicken passes through the town of Cotonou. Cheap cuts from Brazil, the United States, and from Europe find themselves on these market stalls at knockdown prices. At his warehouse, Kenneth Adaho impatiently waits for his delivery. Several thousand frozen chickens, direct from French farms. Etienne, do you have your carton that you have touched? In Benin, He's a big name in frozen chicken. Thanks to his French connections, he has access to the biggest names of the French market. Business is good, but he's not boasting about it. Mon pays aussi produit quelque chose. On ne produit rien. 100% de tout ce que je vends aujourd'hui à la population provient de l'extérieur. Je pense que j'ai été à l'école. L'État m'a donné une bourse pour aller à l'école et je viens vendre les produits, la production de lieux. C'est bien, je gagne peut-être de l'argent, 
Je suis pas fier. In Benin's big towns, imported frozen chicken is becoming a fixture. All Mama Love has to do is chop it up. There's no processing plant anywhere in Benin. The cheap cuts found here aren't eaten in their countries of origin. Defrosted, refrozen, and exposed to sunlight, this chicken risks being infected by all kinds of dangerous bacteria. In Benin, there's yet to be a national survey on the dangers of this meat. And in the markets, sanitation inspections rarely take place. It's been the plight of Africa for decades. Chip imports from other countries, from other continents. And we are here, and today we're saying, OK, we have this particular platform to change the history but are we able to give quality standard products that other countries can say, yes, this is African, we take it. Maybe before we get to the questions that have been asked, it would be important just to get, just to give us your general feel in terms of whether Kenyans in general at the grassroots level really have an understanding of what we are talking about and what needs to be done or what is already being done. Just your quick comment on that. Maybe Buana George and Dina, we can start with you. And of course, from State Department of Trade, we also have Joseph Rotich. Buana George and Dina, just your thoughts on that story and in regards to also Kenya and the way forward. Just a quick comment. Wanna George? All right, maybe I can also, we can also get a comment from Madam Estangari, where, you know, we're talking about standards. Are we really ready in terms of making sure that other countries can say, you know what, this is Kenyan and we are ready to take it so that we can push forward this African dream. Just your comment, Madam Esther. Uh, thank you, Johnson, for that, quest for that uh, question. I will uh, give my comment on the same. Are we lady um, with the standards? Uh, getting lady with the standards is ensuring that we have harmonized uh, regional standards and also that we have adopted international standards. Currently, uh, we have about 64% of our standards are international standards adopted and about 6% uh, are uh, the regional standards, and regional standards, I mean the EAC standards, harmonized. Therefore, we still have um, some way to go. Uh, we have 29% of our standards, which are uh, national standards. And uh, for us to be, to be able to, uh, to trade within the AFCFTA, we will need to harmonize more standards and to ensure that uh, our, uh, our majority of our product standards or where we have a um, competitive advantage, that we have a more uh, harmonization of the standards. Therefore, we are able to trade across Africa. Thank you.
you so much for your patience there. Just looking at the questions that are there and maybe for any panelist who is around, um, maybe let me, at least we have the board chair come. Uh, there are a couple of questions here that uh, Phil, you can maybe share your thoughts on. There is a direct question here that said, do we have any countries that have commenced trade under AFCFTA yet? Okay, that's one question. So just allow me to read some of those questions so that when I call the panelists, if you're there, you can respond to those questions. And then of course, another one says here, is the East African community complementing the AFCFTA as a block? Uh huh. Then will African governments enact policies that encourage local manufacturing, including and not limited to taxation of finished products, for example, in pharmaceutical products? Bonamushai, I know that the, 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 the questions are mixed up, but please respond to one of those that you are ready to do so. Yes, and I think there are some of them, thanks for that, Johnson, but I think some of them are quite technical and perhaps some of the other technical guys will be able to, to answer them. Um, as I know, at the moment, I don't think anybody is trading directly under the CFTA. I think I saw something, Ghana has prepared some documentation on that. So it hasn't quite started in terms of actual trading across borders uh, in any countries as far as uh, I know. Uh, but yes, I think the, the, the last question especially is probably more in line with what we are doing to come that yes, local governments must be um, prepared to do what is necessary to encourage manufacturing to come to their shores. Um, Kenya has an advantage. We already have some sort of uh, manufacturing base. So if we look at the probably the top countries with a manufacturing base in Africa, you have uh, Egypt, uh, South Africa, ourselves, Nigeria, maybe Ethiopia is growing and so on. So we have a big opportunity that we can uh, work on. Um, whether we will have external tariffs on, on products that will be common, say uh, pharmaceuticals and so on. I think uh, pharmaceuticals specifically tends to be very uh, sensitive uh, because it's about people's health and so on. So it's rarely that there are ever um, uh, tariffs on them. Um, but there may be now common tariffs. It would be like the EAC where we have an agreed rate of tariff for imports from outside. Now, um, at the end of the day, for, for most of our manufacturers, and I think it's a way we need to start thinking going forward, and if we're thinking about 2063, 2030, 2040, is that we must be competitive with or without tariffs. In fact, the only place we really should be having tariffs is where other countries issue, um, uh, what do you call it, some sort of uh, benefits. You know, they are, they are subsidizing the manufacturers or they are giving them export compensation. When those things kind of happen, you, you kind of need tariffs to, to level the playing field. But as manufacturers, what we need to be thinking in our minds is that at core, at base, I have to be as competitive as anyone else in the world. That is the aim that I should have uh, strategically to be at that level at base. Then these other distortions, we can try and get them sorted out um, through tariffs and other, other things that government can help us with. Um, because also remember, even though the AFCTA is open and the people say in Nigeria or in um, Uganda even, and in fact, Uganda is a good example if we look at EAC. We were looking at the EAC imports over the last kind of five, 10 years. And you find that Kenya used to be a big uh, supplier into Uganda, Rwanda, Tanzania, but we've lost a lot of that space, but that space is not lost necessarily just to Ugandan manufacturers. We're losing it to China, uh, we're losing it to India and other such uh, bigger economies and uh, some of it to South Africa. So we have to be competitive against those. Because we have an Africa CFTA, does not mean that China or India are going to close or stop uh, selling their goods here. We must be competitive against those, but we, we, this is just opening up for us another door, making it a little bit easier. Hopefully we'll have a little bit of, um, of a gap there that we can utilize, but in the long run, what we need to be is competitive against anyone in the world, 
in what we are selling. Thanks, Johnson. Well, excellent. Be competitive. That's a key word that has to be there so that we become key players in this particular platform. But maybe if uh, Madam Wakiaga is there, there was, a, there, was a, there was a question here that I felt maybe you can respond to. How will AFCFTA promote inclusion of women in trade? What gender specific barriers will it eliminate to make it easier for women to penetrate the market in the African continent? Maybe if you're still there, you can uh, just give your comments in regards to the inclusivity aspect when it comes to the African continental free trade area. Um, Johnson, Paul, I missed your question. Right. It's about uh -huh. the inclusivity. And this is a question from uh, Mora. Yes. Mora says, how will AFCFTA promote inclusion of women in trade? What gender specific barriers will it eliminate to make it easier for women to penetrate the market in the African continent? Basically, inclusivity when it comes to okay. trade. Um, thanks. Thanks for that, uh, because these are real issues. Uh, the gender disparities have led to less women participating effectively in sectors like the manufacturing sector and also in trade. Uh, and I'm sure that uh, through the AFCTA, these are some of the areas we want to, to have addressed. So what I can commit, I don't have a specific answer on specific clauses that will do that, uh, but it's something we will pick up and ensure that uh, as we finalize the details of the agreement, uh, issues around uh, gender and inclusion are included. Uh, but I'll ask the technical people working on the agreement on the panel uh, whether they can make reference to any specific clauses on how the AFCTA will seek to do this. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Madam Wakiaga, for that. Uh, Maureen Wanginda, are you still there? Good afternoon, uh, Mwakazi. Excellent. Thank, thank you so much. Yeah, this is that, Nancy Ngetich. Excellent. Ah, thank you so much, Madam Nancy Ngetich. There was a question here. Somebody says, uh, when do you think realistically Kenya Revenue Authority will start charging the new tariffs on goods imported from South Africa, for instance? All right. So uh, maybe while addressing that question, probably I'll also touch on the other questions that... Uh, have reference to carry. Yes, so in yes, regard to that, I think like, uh, we, yeah, thank you. We, we all aware that uh, last week ending on Saturday, there was a meeting at uh, Accra, of course, on the implementation of the AFTA. So generally, I think the message was out there very loud and clear that uh, each state party was being encouraged that uh, we go home and uh, start implementing the agreements. Of course, the deliberations we've had the whole of this morning to the afternoon has been also quite you know, clear that uh, we still have some challenges here and there. But I think from where CARE stands is that uh, we are willing partner to start implementing the agreement. Indeed, we've taken a few steps so far. We've been able to circulate the, you know, the authorized uh, signatories and the impression of the stamps, because more or less from our presentation is that, uh, you know, the trade arrangement in terms of preferential is just adding to the block what we already have, you know, for Comesa, for ESC. So then, of course, the next challenge is, of course, has been the issue of the tariff offers. But again, from the meeting, uh, there was a roadmap that was put in place as far as the uh, customs administration is concerned, that uh, we are going to undertake certain activities in a prioritized way to ensure that there is you know, continuous engagement with the secretariat and with other state parties, those who are ready to trade, so that we're able to resolve the you know, the gaps and the challenges along the way. So uh, as of now, we, as much as we might not have a, a straight answer that yes, by February, by March, but I think we are on track, we are on course, we put everything in place, we are in liaison with all the relevant uh, competent authorities to ensure that uh, this uh, agreement soon as possible is in, in effected and uh, implemented. And I think just to echo the sentiments of all the presenters today is that uh, it's a journey. We've started today and uh, 
for customs administrations from the meeting we had last week. It's a journey we've started and we'll be rolling it out sooner than later. Uh, maybe to touch on the other question is that uh, how has KRA planned to fill the gap created uh, the deficit in revenue collection? Uh, again, this will not have a you know, one-off answer because of course uh, issues of revenue collections and targets start all the way from fiscal planning at the national treasury. But of course, uh, for us, again, we're looking at the bigger picture. When we boost our manufacturing, definitely there will be revenue from finished products and, and all that. But I think for now, what we are really focusing on is issues of risk management to ensure that yes, we facilitate trade in the right modality so that uh, we've got to get, you know, if we are foregoing taxes, it's taxes that are due that will be foregone. And maybe finally to touch on uh, how, have, uh, how have you harmonized the system of tariff classification with AFC FTA. Again, I remember one of the challenge even from the Ministry of Trade is of course still on the issue of tariff offers that the provisions are still being put in place to bring this ultimate harmonization that will have every state's party in a comfortable sitting position. So again, it's a journey we are still on, but we will get there. Thank you so much. Can I, can thank you so I much, Madam Nancy. Something? Please go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Wanna judge? Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much uh, for, for this chance again. I just wanted to, 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 to add something about what, uh, what has been said by Kerry in terms of uh, harmonization of the ESC tariff offer. I, I think it's about the ESC tariff offer. What, what I want to say is that uh, for this offer to be, to be legally binding, it must meet the, 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 the required standard. One of the required standards is that it must have been submitted as one offer. Bueno, Joseph. But yes, see, because we are a custom team. About to be sorry, sorry, we missed. Am I losing you? Yes, Hello? please, please take it up again. We, we missed you somewhere Hello? there. I, oh, sorry, sorry. What, what I was saying is that uh, what, what, what has to be done for, for this uh, offer to be legally binding, since we are a custom union, it has to be submitted as one offer by the entire EEC uh, community. Now, what has been done already is that we have got a uh, harmonized uh, tariff offer up to around uh, 80%. So we're still below the 90% that is required. Now, this offer cannot be implemented the way it is. Even I, I'm sure the, the customs people will agree with me that they cannot implement it the way it is. It must be cassetted by the secretariat, but it cannot be cassetted when it is not yet uh, 90%. So that is a process that is still on between now and, and June. So for this agreement to be, for us to say that we are implementing the ESE, Tariff offers it must meet that particular requirement, which which I can say, like Pierre is saying, it's a challenge that we are on it, and we must move it quite quite fast. Similarly, the the the, the circle offer also has the same issue. We are still talking about uh, how are we going to allow South African products to come to EAC on a preferential terms. It cannot happen before we have put the two offers meeting the standard that we are talking about. Number two, we have got countries that have not ratified this agreement in the two customs union. In the ESC customs union, we have got two countries, actually three countries. We have got uh, Burundi, Tanzania, and, and South Sudan. In SACU, we have got Botswana. So the two actually cannot also implement these particular agreements the way they are. So that particular process of ratification must be completed. Number three, if this is going to be implemented without ratification, we must think about plan B. And the plan B, I think, is something that the ministers of ESC has to discuss and agree whether we are going to allow the three countries that have already ratified to move on and implement this agreement. Without that, we, we still have a, quite a bit of uh, distance to cover before we implement this particular agreement. Now, the other thing that I wanted maybe to comment, if you allow me, is about the, the 
the harmonization of standards. I think this one is, uh, it is something that is in process also. We already have the framework at the AFTFTA level. We have got the annex that talks about standards, talks about SPS and the harmonization bit. So the, the, the only thing that is still remaining is for it to be done. How soon it can be done, I think it is something that still has to be discussed and then see how quickly we can implement this thing. The, the beauty about it is that we are not starting a totally, totally new process. We have been in FTS for quite some time, in the ESC, in Comesa, and, and others. So it is about uh, implementing that something that we have already been doing. It is about uh, okay, maybe widening the, the area up to the African Union. Otherwise, it is not something totally new. So it is something that is in the process, and I, 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 I can I can assure the private sector that it may it may not take too long time. The last uh, thing that I wanted to comment about uh, is that uh, there was a question asking about how many uh, are there countries that have already started trading on this uh, CFT. The answer that was given, I think, was okay. Ghana has already sent some consignment to South Africa already, apart from the ones that are preparing to send to, I think, Benin or somewhere. But if you look at it uh, critically, it was done on a bilateral basis. It was not done on the basis of the CFT. For one single reason that I've mentioned that uh, the SACU offer is not yet legally binding. Those who have got Botswana, just not ratified already. So the, the, the offer actually has not been uh, legally, legally binding. So the, the, the consignment that was sent to South Africa by, by Nigeria, by, by Ghana, I, I think it was done on a, on, on a special consideration just to show that Africa is about to trade uh, with, with itself. So maybe I can leave it there. I wanted to say something about the rules of order, but I think uh, in the interest of time, I just want to, to leave it there. Thank you very much. Banamakazi, uh, I think uh, I've been told that earlier there was a question for us on the, on the, on the issue of uh, whether this information uh, may I don't know whether this will be a good opportunity for us to respond. Go ahead, please. Yeah, uh, thank you so much. Um, uh, I, I know uh, moving towards the ratification, uh, the State Department for Trade had done a lot of work in terms of um, uh, sensitization and uh, just getting the, the public, the general public aware of what the CFTA portends and the opportunities they are there with. Um, I think moving forward, since trading has start, started on 1st of uh, January 2021, a lot of work still needs to go into uh, sensitizing the, the the entire public, uh, mm -hmm. the private sector, the SMEs on the opportunities, um, and so uh, at the State Department of the State Department of Trade, we are looking at um, uh, developing uh, commu a communication strategy that will be rolled out, and this I'm sure we'll be able to get this information out. We'll be having focused discussions with interest groups, uh, and uh, I think at, at, at the beginning of next month. We are having a conversation with one, one group of SMEs, it's SNDBX, which is a multidisciplinary space for SMEs, and we will be engaging them on the opportunities for uh, that, that are occasioned by the CFTA. And uh, sensitization cannot be wished away. It's something that we have to do. Moving forward, we have to move into the counties. Those are the emerging uh, markets for us. They need to get this information. They need to know the opportunities. They need to tap into... Um, you know, we're talking about SMEs, regional um, uh, value chains, you know, integrating into all that. And so I think the importance of sensitization and uh, awareness is, is critical for, for Kenya to be able to take into the opportunities that have been occasioned by, by the CFT. And that's something that we're going to do. Thank you. Um, we, we have another meeting. I don't know if there will be other questions that are, um, are being given to us, but I'm right. sure my colleagues are in. We have another meeting that we, I have to step in. Okay. Uh, right. Some other colleagues, but the question could also be sent on email so that we can respond sure. to them in, in, in subsequent meetings. Thank you. Definitely. Thank you so much. We appreciate, Bona George, for your responses. And of course, thank you so much for your comments and questions. And just to close in on the comments, there is somebody who says, yeah, this is um, 
Shainui says, many thanks to all the panelists. Your presentations were really interesting and well articulated. Asante Nisana. We also need to look at our cost of production, that is Paris Mbudia, with looming hikes on fuel, electricity, taxations. Then we may not be competitive and maybe be forced to also have substandard goods to bridge the gap. That is a a uh, challenge to, of course, the government, what is being done about this. Asante Sana, Paris Chair Lady, uh, come Nakuru. As we said, this is just the beginning. So keep those comments coming and questions coming. But for now, because of time, we want to close. And really to close for us, I would want us to pay attention to what the Secretary General, AFCFTA, talked about the opportunity that we have is just one of a kind. Please, let's listen to that. This is Africa's last chance. We will not get another opportunity to overcome smallness of our individual national economies. We will not get another opportunity to overcome fragmentation of markets in Africa. Yes, indeed. This may just be that chance we have to make a difference. Asanteni, Sana, all the panelists, thank you so much for being part of the discussion. We say Asante Sana. And to close for us, ladies and gentlemen, I'd kindly call upon one job, one Johi, Kenya Association manufacturer or manufacturers, to talk to us, give us the final remarks and the way forward. Wana Job, please, take it away. Uh, uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, Joseph Mokazi, uh, for that moderation. Uh, I can see uh, that uh, we have tried to maintain up to the end. Uh, so I want to pass the vote of thanks and the way forward. Uh, I'm going to uh, Camp CEO, Felix Wakega, uh, uh, Camp Board Chair, uh, Camp Board members who are present, uh, CAPS, uh, uh, Director of Standards, that is Ms. Uh, Esther Gary, uh, going to KRA, represented by Ms. Maureen Waginda and uh, Ms. Ka Kavata Mutuku, uh, State Department of Trade, Oliver Konje, Mr. Uh, Ms. Gladys Kenua, Jusa Rotich, uh, George Dinda, for your able presentation, and also uh, to Ken Trade, uh, Madam uh, Rono, uh, Rose Rono, who was uh, representing the, the CEO. Uh, all come members who are present, uh, members of the fourth estate, uh, and you, Johnson Wakazi, for uh, that moderation. We all appreciate you for your participation and contribution to this important discussion around Africa continent of free trade area. Uh, as a way forward, uh, we have listened a lot, and we really appreciate uh, that uh, the Africa uh, continent of free trade area uh, will open up intra-Africa trade, uh, drive need for state tolerance with each other drive into Africa infrastructure development and even spark growth of African value chains by Africans and their international friends. Uh, from this uh, to become reality, it is clear from the analysis that we have done today, that customs management systems from KRA are being worked on uh, together with sensitization of customs officer and uh, private sector and this is quite commendable. If you're talking about the setting up of uh, the systems, custom system together with Kentrade, also, this one has been noted, and uh, we are looking at how we can work together between the government and the private sector uh, so that we can actualize uh, this more. However, there's some few areas that need to be looked into when you're talking about uh, uh, having manuals, uh, uh, continental manuals, custom manuals uh, being uh, shared with all the players within the region. Uh, finalization of the rules of origin, uh, even those that are gazetted can be, uh, those are finalized can be gazetted as we wait uh, for the finalization of, of the rest by June 2021. And talk about the trade liberalization by the regional economic uh, blocks. Uh, all this uh, is work in progress. Uh, infrastructural intercon uh, interconnectivity, when you're talking about the road, rail, uh, transborder water bodies, uh, etc. All these is work in progress. And we are looking forward uh, to work with uh, our governments, uh, to work with, uh, uh, with the Africa Contractor Free Trade Secretariat, EAC Secretariat, so that we can actualize uh, most of these. So let's all work hard to achieve this. 
and to Kenyan government, uh, I encourage that we, uh, we we do more of the shuttle economic diplomacy uh, so that uh, we don't uh, have the pitfalls that we have experienced under the, the trap at free trade area, whereby all the member states are not uh, moving together. Uh, so let's do this uh, all together again. Thank you so much. Santi Sana Bona Job. Let's all work hard. Let's all move together. Thank you so much, every person who has participated. Tunasema Asante Sana. All the best. Let's see to it that Agenda 2063 becomes a reality by implementing the African continental free trade area. All the best and God bless you. <laughs>